everyone, I'm Josie Wise and it's nearly Christmas, so we're going to be reading a Christmas story called Pinocchio, the Perfect Gift from Disney Storybook Collection. Here we go! Pinocchio, the Perfect Gift Christmas was just a few days away. Geppetto, the old woodcarver, was busy in his workshop, making toy soldiers and pretty dolls for the boys and girls in the village. There seemed to be more toys than usual to carve and paint this year. I hope I get all the dolls made in time, he thought, working as quickly as he could. Geppetto's son Pinocchio wanted to help his father. He knew that Geppetto worked harder during the Christmas season than any other time of the year. While Geppetto worked day and night with his carving knife and paintbrushes, Pinocchio had other ideas. He couldn't make toys, but he could make their home ready for the Christmas holidays. He asked his friend, Jiminy Cricket, to help him decorate the house. They put up a tree and strung popcorn on its branches. They even hung prickly garlands of holly, all to surprise his dad. This would be Pinocchio's first Christmas as a real boy, so he wanted it to be special. Jiminy, Pinocchio said, I want to find the perfect gift for Geppetto. He should have something special. Will you help me? Hmm, Jiminy said, well if you ask me. Maybe he would like a new knife to carve with, Pinocchio said, though he worried he might not have enough money for that. What about some warm gloves? He could use them when he goes out on cold nights to deliver his toys. You know, Pinocchio, I wonder if a better gift would be, Jiminy began. Socks, cried Pinocchio, or a new hat. Come on, Jiminy, let's go to the shop and see what we can find. Pinocchio hurried out the door. Jiminy had to run to keep up. In the shops, Pinocchio looked at socks, warm hats, gloves, scarves, and even a warm woolly coat. Everything was too small, too expensive, or too ordinary. Pinocchio wanted to find something special. By Christmas Eve, Pinocchio still hadn't found the perfect gift for Geppetto. He couldn't help feeling sad. What am I going to do? he asked Jiminy. Well, I do have this idea, the cricket said. Really? Pinocchio asked. Please tell me. Jiminy sat him at the table and handed him a quill pen. You want to give your father something he really needs? I sure do, Pinocchio beamed. Write this, Jiminy said. Dear Geppetto, my gift to you is an extra pair of hands and an extra willing heart. Love, Pinocchio. When Pinocchio finished writing, he looked up at Jiminy. Now what? he asked. Now you put the note in here. Jiminy held out a box. Pinocchio dropped the note in. Then Jiminy wrapped the package with bright paper and a big bow. Geppetto will be very happy with this gift, Jiminy said. But it's just a scrap of paper, Pinocchio said. What sort of a gift is that? Jiminy smiled. You might be surprised. Geppetto took a break from his work to share a Christmas Eve dinner with his son. After the meal, Pinocchio presented Geppetto with his gift. What's this? he asked. Your Christmas present, Pinocchio replied. I hope you like it. Geppetto untied the bow and tore the wrapping paper away. Why, this is the perfect present, he cried. I could use an extra pair of hands in my workshop. How did you know, Pinocchio? Pinocchio smiled. Jiminy had been right. He was surprised at how much joy this simple gift brought to his father. I'm glad to help, Pinocchio said. I can start right now if you want. Pinocchio cleared away the dinner dishes from the table, washed them and put them away. Then he went to Geppetto's workshop. He swept up the wood shavings and boxed and wrapped the new toys. He made labels for each box so that Geppetto would know which child each gift was for. The two of them made the perfect team. When Geppetto set out to deliver the last of the gifts, Pinocchio went up to bed. He was tired after helping his father all night, but he couldn't ignore the warm feeling in his tummy. He was pleased to have made his father so happy. As he drifted off to sleep, 
he promised himself that he would help out more often. That night, the blue fairy appeared. Because you have been so thoughtful this year, I have come to grant you one very special wish, she said. Think carefully about what you want. Pinocchio thought about the many wishes he could ask for, but he still only wanted one thing. I want to give Geppetto the perfect Christmas gift, he told the blue fairy, something that he will love forever. The blue fairy smiled. She knew just what the perfect gift would be. You are a very kind and loving boy, Pinocchio, she said. I'm sure Geppetto will treasure this gift for years to come. The next morning, Geppetto woke up early. He tiptoed downstairs to light the fire. He was so happy that Pinocchio had helped him the night before that he wanted to surprise his son. It was his greatest wish to make Pinocchio's first Christmas special. Geppetto went to place his gifts for Pinocchio under the tree. He had carved a beautiful toy rocking horse and had crafted a playful jack-in-the-box. Then he looked at the tree, he gasped. A wooden puppet hung from the branches. It wore a pair of red dungarees and a red feather in its cap. It looked just like his son. My dear Pinocchio, Geppetto said with a smile. He examined the puppet, lifting its arms and legs. It looked just like a puppet he had made a long time ago. He thought back to the lonely night when he had made a wish on the wishing star. He'd hoped that the puppet he was making would turn into a real boy, a boy he could love. The blue fairy had granted his wish, and Pinocchio, the wooden puppet, had turned warm and loving. He'd become Geppetto's son. When Pinocchio heard his father moving about, he and Jiminy ran downstairs as fast as they could. Merry Christmas, he cried. Geppetto sat in his favorite chair holding the puppet. My gift, how did you make it? Pinocchio stared at the copy of the puppet. He'd been just like that once, he smiled. The blue fairy had chosen the perfect present for his father. Puppet Pinocchio was my favorite creation, Geppetto said. Oh, how I've missed him. Pinocchio felt a frown appear on his face. You have, he asked. Have I disappointed you? Geppetto laughed. Not at all, son. You've been perfect in every way. This toy reminds me of how very much I wanted a real son. He reminds me of how happy I am to have you. Pinocchio smiled as relief flooded his body. He went over to the puppet and looked at it closely. It was like looking into a mirror. The puppet had the same dark hair and blue eyes that he did. Geppetto stood up and started dancing with the puppet and singing. Pinocchio clapped along. Father, I'm so happy, thought Pinocchio. Stopping to catch his breath, Geppetto looked at his son and said, No one has ever thought to give me a toy of my own to play with, because I'm a toy maker. You understand how much I love toys, Pinocchio. Thank you, son. See? Jiminy whispered to Pinocchio. I told you that you would be surprised, and now you've been surprised twice. Pinocchio nodded as he watched his father dance with the puppet some more. Then he went over and danced beside the puppet that looked so much like him. Geppetto held out the strings for Pinocchio so that he could try to make the puppet dance for himself. It was difficult because the puppet was the same size as Pinocchio, but he didn't care. He was happy to share his mo this moment with his father. A little later, Pinocchio opened the gifts that Geppetto had placed under the tree for him. He laughed at, as the jack-in-the-box popped up and he rocked the small wooden horse across the floor. But the best present that he received had come from the blue fairy. He would never forget the smile that lit up his father's face. He hoped that they would share many more happy holidays together. Thanks for reading this Christmas Pinocchio story with me. I'm Josie Waste. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe to my channel for more stories just like it. Have a very Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye!